In this webcast, we'll look in detail at the stereochemical issues associated with the closure of monosaccharides to form cyclic hemiacetals. As a starting point, we can recognize the top and bottom faces of the carbonyl group in sugars as diastereotopic. Attack of a hydroxyl group at the top and bottom faces of the carbonyl group produces diastereomers, which differ only in configuration at the new stereocenter. The carbonyl carbon is also known as the anomeric carbon, and the diastereomers produced by attack at the top and bottom faces are called anomers. Because the moniker's top and bottom face depend on how the sugar is drawn, we need to define a standard convention to indicate the direction of nucleophilic attack on the anomeric carbon. While we could certainly use Ray and Psi for this purpose, it would be useful to define a convention using the cyclic products because these are typically the dominant forms of sugars at equilibrium. Using the carbonyl group of the open form is less generally useful. Let's examine Fischer projections of the two anomers of D-glucose. Immediately, it becomes apparent that the only difference between the anomers is the configuration of the former carbonyl carbon. We distinguish the anomers by calling one alpha and one beta. Like the L and D designations, we use the configuration of the bottom-most stereocenter of the Fischer projection as our reference point for alpha and beta. When the anomeric hydroxyl group points in the same direction as the hydroxyl group on the bottom-most stereocenter, we call the anomer alpha. When these two hydroxyl groups point in opposite directions, the anomer is called beta. Although Fischer projections make it easy to see the stereochemical differences between anomers, they tend to obscure three-dimensional structure. A view of cyclic sugars called a Hayworth projection takes us one step closer to the true three-dimensional structure of cyclic sugars. To draw a Hayworth projection, we draw a six-membered ring with the lower three bonds bolded to indicate that they are coming out towards us. Typically, the oxygen atom of the six-membered ring is drawn in the upper right position. Substituents are drawn straight up or down off of each carbon atom. Let's now draw a Hayworth projection of beta D-glucose. Notice that the shape of the six-membered ring mimics very closely the C shape that we saw earlier when examining the Fischer projections of open chain monosaccharides. This suggests that converting from the Fischer to the Hayworth projection should be relatively straightforward. All we need to do is make sure that all the vertical bonds in the Fischer projection are part of the plane of the ring in the Hayworth projection. To set up the Fischer projection in this way, we need to rotate the last stereocenter to bring the oxygen atom to a vertical position because it's in the plane of the ring in the Hayworth projection. With the Fischer projection in this form, we can easily convert to a Hayworth projection with proper configurations at each stereocenter. Take a moment now, if you haven't already, to build a model of beta D glucose and convince yourself that both the Hayworth and Fisher projections drawn here are correct. Finally, let's think about drawing beta D glucose in a six membered chair form. The Hayworth projection almost gets us there, but now we need to consider axial versus equatorial substituents, making sure to draw the ring in its most stable chair conformation. Placing the CH2OH group in an equatorial position, we can now see that all the other substituents in beta D glucose would also occupy equatorial positions. The chair flipped form of this sugar is unstable because all substituents would be placed in axial positions. We could go through the same process for the alpha anomer, but you should recognize that in all of these projections, the anomers differ only in the configuration of the anomeric carbon. For instance, to generate the chair form of the alpha anomer, all we need to do is exchange hydrogen and the hydroxyl group at the anomeric position. Although the hydroxyl group is now in an axial position, this chair form is overwhelmingly more stable than the alternative.